You're going to need various supplies today, but you'll need your paper that has the nine step value scale. The black oval is the easiest, but there are other watercolor types you can try. Palettes, doesn't really matter. You could use a disposable plate. You'll also need a couple cups of water, one clean, one dirty. You should also have some tape and a paper towel. I'm going to put the paper towel on my lap. I'm going to tape the value scale to the drawing board, small pieces of tape. I want it above the area that I'm working on. And really I should be working on this one in case anything drips. So I'm going to move this down. I want this close to what I'm working on for reference so I can easily compare. I'm also going to tape down the corners. As watercolor paper gets wet, it has a tendency to buckle. So I'll tape down the corners. Before I get going, my palette needs to be clean. I'm going to select a brush. I could go with large or small. Small is just going to take longer, especially since I'm doing a fairly large demo. Choose the largest brush you have, especially early on in the process. I have two cups of water. You could just as easily do it with one, but I think I'm going to use this one to rinse and this one for clean water. So before I get going, I have to make my palette clean. Now that might be easier by just putting it over the surface here and having this all drip in. <clears throat> we don't want these colors to mix in with our black. We want it to just be a, a solid grayscale. So once that's fairly clean, we can use our paper towel and set that up. Now it does not matter what you use today. You could use a black oval, you could use any of these, uh, Higgins, you could use Bombay, um, Dr. Philip Martin, you could use liquid watercolor. They're all essentially the same. So if I put a little bit of black in each one, this is liquid watercolor. Then we've got this already going. We can use our Higgins ink. They're all going to produce a black and the principle is all basically the same, whether it's ink, watercolor, liquid watercolor. I'm going to put a little bit of this in each one, and I'll use my middle area for mixing. See that one hit some water and spread out, that was kind of cool. And I, I hope not to need much more than that, but I can always reload. So what I would want to do at first is clean my brush, clean my palette, and then I want to manage the amount of water that's in my brush. A real easy way to do that is to squeeze the water back into the container. You can also use your paper towel and you can dab off your brush. But with a completely dry brush, you can test these out and you can see that they're, they're going to make slightly different amounts of black. I don't necessarily remember what each one of these was as I put it down, but obviously this is a little greener. There's our darkest mark so far from this one. It's kind of gooey, even though it came out in liquid format. Here's my last one of the liquids, and that's the boldest by far. So the question becomes then, which do you use? It totally doesn't matter, but you need to know how dark you can go and what you can expect from each one of these. I like how dark this one on the far right is, so I'm going to use that. Now I'll just show you by comparison, if you use a little bit of water in here, and I don't mean a lot, so I'm going to squeeze some of that back out. And you'll see a lot of times I am working with my fingers, I have that paper towel close at hand, but I don't want to have tons of water when I'm going for a super, super dark value. But I do have to activate this and get it nice and wet, and then I can make a dark mark with that. And that comes across being pretty much as dark as the previous one. So if I use the oval, here, that's pretty common what most of you will have. Um, I'm just going to start at the top and notice that my black is on this end, so I'm starting with my darkest value. And that with this being a fairly dry paint, meaning there is water to get it going, but there's lots of paint and very little water, I have to reload occasionally. And I'm just kind of working my way back and forth down. Sometimes I have to change direction to keep it neat within the box there. But that's my oval produces a nice rich black. And then if I rinse that out, 
I can show you this liquid watercolor here. Does just the same thing. Nice rich black, same exact value. That doesn't really matter. What you wouldn't want to do is to switch from your oval to one of these because obviously that's much greener. You're going to notice the difference. This is much lighter. And so you want to be consistent. Once you start, I'm showing you how this liquid watercolor or whatever this was on the far end, I'd have to go back and watch the video, is the same as the oval, but that both of them produce a nice dark value. Okay, now a couple things to be aware of. If your brush doesn't have this nice candle-like taper and it starts to spread out like this, your brush is too dry. There is a time and a place for a dry brush technique. It can be kind of textural and kind of cool. But for what we're doing today, we want the brush to stay nice and in its shape. It's got kind of like a candle flame shape, okay? Also, the process is fairly simple. The more paint you have, the less water you have, the darker your watercolor will be. The more water and less paint you have, the lighter it will be. To make it lighter though, you do have to add that water. It makes it more fluid and it's more prone to drip and to run. When I look at this and I look at this box, they're the same value already. Your lightest lights in watercolor will always be the paper. You have to skip over them. Now with this clean water, I can wet this box here. And this is just water. You can see it's not changing the value of the surface. But what I want for up here, now you can see this. There's this great artist. Uh, he calls this Mr. Bead. It's a little bead of water. And he says that if you can control the bead, you're going to be just fine in watercolor. Um, but what I do oftentimes is I'll take this and squeeze this dry. You can see all the moisture come out on my finger. Now this is very flat and dry. And this can help to soak back up. A dry brush is a thirsty brush. It will soak back up that water. And now I just have a somewhat wet surface. If you look to the side, it's kind of shiny with the light. If you touch it with the back of your hand, it's kind of cool. But what we want is we want to take clean water and add just a touch of pigment to it. Now that's probably too much. I want it to look like a somewhat murky puddle. Grab some of that green. That made me a little frustrated. <laughs> so I just want it, and that's almost good right there. If I can control some of this water. Just real, real thin, like almost to where you can see the surface coming through completely. When I go back to this box then, it looks almost like I'm doing nothing. I may want to add just a touch more, but you can see I'm getting rid of some of it before I add, and then I'm like, okay, I'm gonna need to add that in. But I'm gonna put it across the top here, and it creates that bead, Mr. Bead. And you can see the bead hangs kind of dark, and all I have to do is tilt my brush with the tip of it, grab that bead and work it down. And because the paper is wet already, and because the paint is so watery and fluid, it produces this nice, even wash. This is why I prefer to work on an easel. I know it drives some people crazy, but gravity helps me work that bead downward and make this nice and even. Okay, now what I would recommend is that you skip number one, you do your lightest value wet into wet. That's a wet wash into a wet area of the paper. Down here, I recommend you work wet onto dry. And I, I recommend that your balance of color is heavier on the paint. But what you're gonna have to do each time is you're gonna have to add a little bit of water to your mixture. So if you're using a fluid mixture, you can just thin that out a little bit. Add some water. Of course, control this, tap some of that out. With a more fluid mixture, you're gonna have Mr. Bead again. But because you've added water, you've diluted that paint. And it should be a little bit lighter than the value that's next to it. Now you gotta be careful along these seams because you're gonna reactivate this paint. And there's a tendency that it will pull it over you want to be careful about that. 
But you see with wet on dry, it's, it's a little streakier. I'm not a huge fan of all that, but that's the way it is. Um, what you might want to do is kind of work back and forth so you're making small incremental steps. So maybe come up here and make this just a touch darker. This little pool right here can become a little darker. And you notice I'm going back and forth between my dark, darkest liquid mixture and my oval. It's the same thing. Uh, as long as you're... See, I don't like how much darker that's gotten. And you can see that sometimes in my margin, I'll test the strokes. I should have done that there. I should have tested first. But what I can do is I can get this wet and I can press the surface of my paper towel onto this and lift off a good amount of that paint. And what I think I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to work wet on wet. This is kind of a dingy wet wash, which makes it similar to that value. I'm going to squeeze out the extra moisture and soak this back up. But then I'm going to come back in here, make sure my brush isn't too dry. Now I'm going to grab this mixture and hopefully when I do it now, because it's working wet into wet, it's going to dissipate a little bit more and it won't be quite as strong. So learn from your mistakes for sure. Make sure you use your margins to test. I think that's a really good strategy. And make sure that every once in a while you step back or you squint and you see like, are these subtly different? If they're the same when you paint them, you're really not doing much, okay? You should see a subtle difference when you're done. And it's the same exact process. You can add a little bit more water to this guy. The thinner this gets, the lighter it should be. And if you don't see a difference, you can always just add more water into your wash. I just went straight in, kind of into that dirty bucket because that is gray in and of itself and just added water into that wash. And I just grab Mr. Bead here, work him downward. That drip's not gonna go crazy off of um, the dry paper. Now, if it's wet, it will probably run through that. If you touch that, it's really quickly going to flow through there. And I think maybe that second pass is gonna make it a little bit too dark, but the process of just adding a little bit of water and diluting this is going to make these boxes subtly different and lighter as you go along. And then you just kind of come back and work it the opposite way. You add a little bit more um, paint into your watery mixture. By the time you get to your mid-tone, so you would have one, two, three, four on one side, one, two, three, four on the other side. By the time you get to your mid-tone, you really should be going wet on dry. You could potentially go here and go wet and wet. But notice how the starting value of this wet and wet is the same as that. I just want you to be able to see that bead working downward. And then you're going to want to control your water, squeeze out your moisture, use this to pick up the drip, then grab your mixture here. And if it's too dark, gosh, real quick, come in here, lift it off. You can fix it. It's not ruined, but you're gonna have to then add more water into that mixture. Otherwise, it's gonna get too dark too fast. And it's really important that you try to subtly shift your values a little bit at a time. If you make a dramatic jump from this value to this value, which I think I've gone too dark. So while that's wet, I'm just gonna take my paper towel and I'm gonna lift. And now some people have the tendency to try to fix it right now. I'm gonna let it dry and see how it looks. And I can adjust it a little bit more, mostly only to make it darker at that point. But you shouldn't come back and mess with it because what people tend to do is they'll start doing this and they'll scrub, 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 and I'm gonna try to do it to where you can see. My brush is nice and soft, so it's not happening. But if you've ever done this with paper, you can start to see it happen there. Eventually your paper is going to get worked and raw and it's just going to rub off. And so it's counterproductive. These little flakes will be in everything. So you don't want to scrub the surface, really. You'll ruin your paper. Okay. So the, the process is fairly simple. I prefer to work on an easel. You can complete this exact same process 
on the table. The only problem is you don't have gravity to help you pull the moisture down and create more even washes. So that's it. I would work from both sides, meet in the middle. By the time you're at your mid-tone, make sure that you're working um, wet onto dry. All of your dark washes should be wet on dry. Your light washes should be wet on wet. Make sure you keep the white for your, your first value. And then when all is said and done, you can just take this guy, dunk it in your water, rinse this off, and call it done. Dump these out in the sink and, and that's a wrap.